Alhamdulillah, Hirabil Alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Amma bad. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hayyakum Allah jami'an. A question was asked from one of our brothers, how to cope with divorce. And so, Habatifillah, there is so much to talk about. In fact, there are whole books, there are whole courses uh, in, for people who are in psychology and people who are in counseling and marital counseling and divorce counseling. There is a whole science, if you will, related to these issues and issues of relationship. And, for, and secondly, I want to mention that I am not a counselor, but I can offer some advice as a Muslim about some of these issues and how we can deal with some of these uh, issues, these issues of divorce and so forth. So first and foremost, Sahabati Bilal, is we have to understand that there are many causes for divorce and there are many issues with regards to divorce. For example, it could have to do with abuse, abuse of relations, abusive, abuse mentally, abuse physically, abuse spiritually, that all of these can be factors in uh, one's divorce. So, for example, if one is divorced uh, from the woman's side or from the man's side, uh, that one is divorced due to spiritual reasons, meaning one of the spouses is not practicing Islam, uh, that they have renounced Islam, or perhaps they've become so weak and they're doing major sins and ma'asi and cheating and, and all kind of other, uh, other sins that this can be obviously a detriment to one's spiritual well-being and spiritual growth and a destruction to the marital bond uh, as Muslims. And even as non-Muslims, they have these same uh, types of issues that they have to deal with. One of the things uh, that people often uh, find is that they strive to get their ex back. When a marriage is new, unless there is immense hostility in their parting and so forth. And even sometimes, even when that is uh, the situation, that you'll have one partner that doesn't, is not ready to move on, that they still want to get back with their old, their ex and they strive. And sometimes that can be a, a matter of years for a person. And that's what we're going to talk about too, that it's important to strive to move on. Another issue with regards to that is coping with the breakup, coping with not being married anymore. So this is also an issue for many people that they find great difficulty in how to cope in being single again, that they were once married, they had a household with someone, they shared that household, now they are alone. And that can be the, again, physically alone, the uh, which affects your could affect your spiritual well-being as well and the mental and so forth as we are one and also financially is an issue that no longer uh if it was a household built on two incomes now it is on one income if one person is supporting the other then now a person has lost their support so there's all kinds of struggle and then if there's children involved and that's a whole nother avenue to consider when considering divorce and obviously, when someone is making the transition and they are, they have been divorced. Another point, Ahabatifillah, is some people, they suffer from chronic divorce, chronic uh, breakups, meaning that unfortunately, and we suffer from this often, more so, I think, in the revert communities, because Islam is new for us and the culture of Islam is new for us. And the traditions of Islam is new for us and can be alien for us. And with that, people marry sometimes easy and they divorce easy. So it won't be so strange to find in certain communities that you find women, sisters who have been married 10, 15 times, which could be unimaginable in certain cultural communities that they could not imagine that. Uh, being married, having went through 10, 12, 15. I recall one particular brother who mentioned to me, uh, 
and almost in a way of bragging, I think he had something like 16 children and that was years ago. And he had, you know, I don't know how many, I think he might've said 30 marriages he had had or something, you know, and, and unfortunately in certain communities, that is not strange. And so this is a very uh, problematic issue. And we hope that the future generations will be able to understand and cope with being married and understand the seriousness as the Prophet Wasallam mentioned that marriage is one of the things that uh, to not take lightly as well as divorce. And so those are very serious things. So we have to begin to take the seriousness of divorce, uh, the seriousness of marriage and the implications of divorce very seriously as a community. Uh, another point that we want to mention before even getting into the topic is that also a, 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 um, a problem with these chronic marriages is that also it makes for a hard heart. As we have heard on more than one occasion from certain sisters that say, you know, whatever, you know, I just want to be married right now. If it works, it works. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. That she's already going into the uh, marital bond with a hard heart and having accepted that, hey, it may not work out. So I just want to get the physical pleasure in a halal fashion, which is no problem with that as far as trying to safeguard your religion and protect yourself from sin. But you want to have higher expectations. And as we like to say, uh, be in it to win it. And so it's very important to look at those relationships and strive. And all of us make mistakes as the Prophet Muhammad wasallam said, Adam khata wa All the children of Adam commit sins, you know, and they make mistakes. And the best of those are those who repent. So we want to be of those who repent and learn from our mistakes, learn from previous marriages if we have been divorced, and especially if it's been multiple divorces. Wallahum stan. Another point is also a factor with regards to that. Having been divorced, if someone is, has been divorced or has been through a divorce, then it be, can be difficult in establishing trust. Likewise, in the situation when people have abusive uh, relationships, they've come from an abusive spouse. Some, uh, as we know, many women, unfortunately, uh, go through this. And I was just listening to some interesting reports, which is a travesty in South Africa. And they were talking about that during COVID-19, the not just spousal, but women's killing has gone up. So for whatever reason in South Africa, it seems to be a trend that they like to kill women. And it is a sickness and an evil disease and almost a homophobic type of attitude when you begin to belittle and destroy women and give women no value. What do you want? Just a bunch of men around you? Is that what you want? So you have to really consider the sickness that has uh, permeated many societies and many peoples, as the Arabs used to do, uh, especially in the Arabs in the Arab Peninsula, uh, during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and so it was a jahiliya custom that they used to kill their 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 bury, not only just killing their daughters, can, and we can't even imagine and talk about that, anyone who has a child and has a daughter, and the mercy and the love and the affection and the bond that you hopefully have with your daughters, uh, to imagine actually taking your daughter out and burying her alive in sand. That's just, you know, so it shows you how humans become worse than animals, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions. And so it's very important not to have a hard heart and to uh, realize the value of one another uh, and not to destroy the women. And like I said, it could be a mental, a spiritual and physical abuse. And also, I want to touch on something very quickly, is also we have to realize that also even women abuse men, that there is uh, their psychological abuse, because unfortunately, perhaps due to our food, which I believe it is, I believe it has to do with all the chemicals in our foods, that men have a lower uh, testosterone than they had in the past. So many of us, if not most of us, if not all of us, have developed more feministic 
traits. And with that being the case, we see that also that and women being have taken on roles for various reasons, changes in societies, changes in cultures, all kind of things moving away from tradition onto the contemporary settings and the complexities of societies that women have also taken a very machismo role and some women are very masculine and they run their household. And I've seen this countless times, even people from Ahl Sunnah who cannot do anything without their wife's permission as if he is their mother, as if she is the mother and even stronger than that. And I've seen it uh, and it's just amazing because I guess I'm just the opposite of that. I can't imagine a woman running my affairs. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us and the people. I mean, ya Rabbil Alameen. So it's very important to to, uh, to understand the complexities of what we're dealing with. And so I'm making this general and then we'll address our brother's more specific issue. Uh, and a last point I want to mention with regards to that is breaking unhealthy patterns uh, in uh, in failed relationships that often what we find as the people who have been divorced multiple times, there is a damage, no doubt. There is a psychological damage and perhaps a spiritual damage. And that with that being the case, Ahabbatifillah, is that this damage, uh, it affects the hearts. And this damage often can be the result of uh, unhealthy patterns. For example, someone can have, uh, for example, if a man has divorced a multitude of times, he needs to begin to look at why he's divorced, why he cannot seem to have a successful relationship. You know, is there something in his way of marriage? And I can talk about many intricate details of many people I've known. Some of them are imams. Some of them are others. Uh, and we've had many frank discussions and, and so on and so forth. Sometimes there's cultural issues. Sometimes people, they go through marriages from people from another culture, which is, alhamdulillah, a ni'ma minni amillah. This is from the sunnah of Allah, because we're, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us in nations and tribes, so that we would get to know one another. But sometimes people marry, and I would say more so when it's outside of the country. For example, men from America marrying women from Morocco or Egypt or wherever that there are vast cultural uh, differences and expectations. And sometimes you find that brothers, they expect a certain kind of affection or they expect a certain kind of whatever. And likewise, in those cultures, they expect a certain type of spending. They expect a certain type of uh, standard of living or a special relationship with their families. All kind of issues can play into that. So, as I've mentioned prior to this, it's very important for people to know when they go into marrying from another culture that they have knowledge about that culture, that you should take the time out to learn about some of those things because sometimes those things can be the cause of divorce. So it's very important for us, Ahabba, uh, that we, we have this... Uh, that when we have un unhealthy habits, you know, we have some cause for a divorce. Like some men, they just also, they marry women that this is another problem. What we find sometimes with the intercultural marriages overseas is we find that some brothers marry sisters because they're so happy. She's an Arab. She's this. She's that. She was from a Muslim family, which is a great ni'mah, minni amillah that they're from a Muslim family and they have Muslim tarbiyah. But sometimes that's not sufficient for keeping a marriage together. So then the brothers, they are, they become, unfortunately, bored or unattracted. They were not attracted to those women in the first place. And I've seen this countless times from uh, Western brothers, particularly from America and the UK, who have married women like in Yemen. We saw this countless times. They married Yemeni girls, a good, maybe coming from a good family. She was very religious, but she was not at all what he's used to in his Western, uh, what he's been, uh, has become accustomed to and what he's been bombarded by as far as beauty and stimulus. So he marries her and instantly I can recall countless situations where there was talk of divorce and someone had to counsel 
because of this issue that he did not look at her properly, the culture didn't allow it, or uh, that they just had these these barriers uh, and, and, and just also the expectations and looks. Or he marries a woman and she's, uh, for him, borderline att attractive and he thinks that she's going to change. Oh, she's going to lose so much weight than this marriage. And they may, may or may not even talk about it, but that doesn't become the case, which is the case in most cases. Women, after children, they put on weight and it's only those women that are really into their physical fitness that they're going to pay attention to those things. Uh, and so with that being the case, there can be a loss of attraction. There can be a distance from that. And so these are issues. Likewise, it can be from the other side that women, we've known cases where literally the phone call came in the middle of the night, the first night of marriage. I want a divorce before Fajr. They married sometime before Maghrib. Then the sister wants a khula before Fajr because I don't know, maybe the physical something. She didn't find what was pleasurable and she was so, you know, this is from the Western perspective that she was so, had expectations and the brother could not live up to her expectations like that. And she married, divorced or wanted divorce. And these are countless situ situations and scenarios. So we're getting a little broader in our scope. I meant for this to be about a one minute video. And now we're probably into 20 minutes for all I know. But. It's so important and it gives us some insight in general into these important topics. So uh, often there are many expectations, there are many reasons, but the point of mentioning this point, this point was that breaking, uh, breaking unhealthy habits. So also another thing why a sister has to ask herself why she's been divorced 15 times. Uh, is it because she is a, uh, a fighter? A physical fighter or even a, a one who can never is difficult to uh, to agree with or she uh, has some di open disobedience to a law she doesn't want to cover properly she doesn't this and the husbands constantly f have problems with this you know various reasons or another important thing is our mental health which is a whole nother door that we can't really open up but I just want to touch on the fact that unfortunately many in the communities uh, Muslim, non-Muslim, born Muslim, uh, indigenous or reverts or what have you, that they, as there's a lot of, uh, in this day and age, the widespread mental disorders and things like this. So sometimes women want to marry in order to fulfill shortcomings in themselves because they just can't do anything on their own and they don't have the confidence to do anything on their own. And they think that the salvation is going to come through marriage. Perhaps at times that can be successful. I don't really know. Uh, and that would require studying statistics. But what we see in practical terms and in practical understanding is that often that is not the case. And we've seen many women like this who were weak in their own lives and their own mental stability and some of them perhaps suffering from types of dementia and things like this. And then they marry thinking that the, the knight in shining armor is going to be able to uh, strengthen her and make her a whole person. So she's coming to the marriage imbalanced and not as a whole person. So these are mental issues which a person needs to go the avenue of seeking help and seeking help through the book and the sunnah and, uh, you know, the prophetic medicines and then uh, to counseling and so forth, if it is something that requires that. And so these are also issues which can be unhealthy for cause sisters, unfortunately, to be go through uh, marriage after marriage in many of our communities. And we've seen it countless times. Wallah musta'an. Likewise, a habit filah, that can be the case with a man, that he suffers from mental uh, issues and he can be abusive physically, mentally, spiritually, what have you, in the marriage because he doesn't know any better. You know, this is what he is actually, some people are very damaged. They've had trauma and abuse that from childhood and they carry that into marriage. So those are also other unhealthy, uh, unhealthy backgrounds that a person may carry from marriage to marriage thinking that it's going to get fixed 
just by having a righteous spouse or whatever. But in fact, they have to deal with their issues. So it's very important to strive to be a whole person. And that's why Islam is always calling us to our own spiritual growth and letting us know that we're all going to taste death and that we need to save ourselves and our families from the hellfire. And we need to begin with what? Ourselves. And then what? Our families. Then what? Then our communities and so on and so forth. And so we need to have healthy, strive to have a healthy heart. As the Prophet ﷺ said, when he talked about that the body contains a morsel of flesh, uh, and he said, if it is sick, then the whole body is sick. If it is healthy, the whole body is sick. Verily, it's the heart. So working on our hearts is one of the solutions for all of these things, especially coping with divorce, especially coping with divorce, working on your heart. A last point before I get to some quick advice is that we have to look at that the people of, of counseling and the counselors uh, in some of the Western countries, they have deduced five stages of what is considered the five stages of divorce or the five stages of healing or the five stages of grief. They have... <laughs> <coughs> various ways of discussing this topic of divorce. One of the things they say is a person goes through denial. You know, they're denying, they're in denial that they're getting divorced or that they are divorced. So you'll find sisters that are in denial about the whole situation. You know, that their marriage is plummeting and falling apart. Likewise, the brother, he had a picture, the white picket fence, and the, pick, the fence is broken down and it's burning and the house is on fire. So he is then looking at how to maintain his marriage, but maybe it's already broken. As the Prophet ﷺ said, the woman is like the crooked rib, and if you try too hard to straighten it, you will break it. And the breaking is divorce. And so we can really see that similitude or that uh, that analogy our messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam, gave us in that trying to put too much pressure uh, on a woman in marriage, and likewise, even the man. And like I said, we are affected probably by our foods and the steroids in our foods and the, and the vaccines and all the other things that affect us and change our DNA and change who we are as human beings. And with that, we have, as men, we tend to be very sensitive as well. And as men, we don't always exhibit the, the masculine traits and we are complex beings as well as human beings, Aslan. So a lot of people are in denial that their marriage is failing. Or they're in denial that they've actually been divorced when divorce is already finished. So there's a stage of being in denial. The second stage they mention is anger. So then after denying this for a while, the person begins to get angry about it. You know, why did I get divorced? <coughs> why did she, he divorce me? Or why did she want khula? Why is this? Why is this? They become angry. And some people, unfortunately, they even go to disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they question why Allah did I get divorced? And this is a very uh, difficult thing because the divorce can be a very heart-wrenching process. Uh, then another stage, they mention the third stage, they say bargaining. And what they mean by this <clears throat> is that a person uh, will, and it has to do with kind of their acceptance, is that they begin to bargain. Uh, and this can be during the last stages of marriage or in actual divorce, after divorce. So after divorce, you might find the husband because maybe it's from the wife's part. Maybe she doesn't want to practice Islam anymore. And he, you know, didn't know how to, he didn't know how the fit and how to deal with things. And he wants, he still wants to be with her, but she has moved on and she wants to go to Jahiliyyah. She wants to leave Islam. She wants to go to the club, whatever the case may be. So with that, then uh, the man may begin to bargain. You know, you know, uh, well, if I won't do this anymore, you know, if you get back with me, I'll be a better husband. If you do this, I'll buy you whatever you want. If you do this, I'll get you so much gold. If you just come back to me, you know, he begins to bargain instead of, you know, he's already been through denying and he's been through anger and he begins to uh, begin to bargain on how to restore the marriage. And likewise, the women, some of the women, OK, let's get our family back together. I'll accept the fact that you have another wife. Let's get our fat. Let's get our marriage together. I will accept. Uh, you know, we've been divorced long enough. I want you back. Uh, 
you know, whatever the case may be, that uh, the person begins to bargain. I don't want a mahar. I don't want anything. Just marry me. Okay. So these are sometimes what happens during and as a stage. Then, as they mention, they say that there's a stage of depression, of great sadness. And it doesn't mean that these stages are exactly one, two, three after one another. And there most likely is going to be a mix of all of these things during that whole period of growth and crisis. <clears throat> and then finally is the st stage of acceptance, of beginning of just finally accepting, okay, we're finished. It's gone. She's moved on. She's going to marry another brother. There's another brother inquiring about her. Or, you know, he's he's gone. He just married another wife. Or he just doesn't want me. Or whatever the case may be. So this, this no one can put a time frame on this. In that for some people it re requires months. Some people it requires uh, days or weeks. And some people it requires years to really heal. And we've seen cases where women have married again. After a devastating divorce, maybe it was her first marriage, and she still wants her old husband, and she will marry another man, be intimate with him, and not even really want to be there. And this can also cause for a destructive marriage in the new marriage. So these are real scenarios that also happen and could be devastating. <clears throat> so this acceptance stage is very imperative. So getting to the question, is that? How do we cope? Well, this is a part of the cope is knowing that it's a natural process, that it's a difficult process, that you've never, that you're not the only one who's been there, that millions and millions, perhaps billions of people have been through <clears throat> something similar is, is knowing and understand that. Number two, accepting. And I would say the most important thing is to grow because some people, they don't grow. They don't learn. Travesty, trauma, conflict, Problems arise in their lives and they don't grow. They don't benefit anything. Some people, they're, that's a lack of fiqh in life and fiqh fideen. That they don't elevate in their Islamic knowledge. They don't elevate in their worldly knowledge. They just go almost like the animals from one trial to another. They bump their head and they still didn't learn why they bumped their head. So it's very important to grow. Is that you have to realize you're going to have to grow through those stages. And some of the ways that you can that can help you grow is having husna suhba, is having good companionship. So for a sister who's been divorced, she needs a good sister or good sisters to be with, you know, talabat al alam, sisters that are that have knowledge and can help her and help strengthen her heart and help carry her through. A good down sister who can help her. These are good things. The main thing is to have good companionship. People who are good and righteous who will call them to good. Likewise for the brothers. The same to have good brothers around them who they can who can help grow with them or help them through those stages of growth. And that's the most critical thing, I think, to cope is that you have to realize it's a growth and you can't put a time on it. And you have to grow through that in order to cope with it. Learn from the issues and you will eventually move on and you'll be so surprised how many of us have had those kind of relationships, especially Prior to Islam, many heartaches, many heartbreaks, because we grew up in mixed environments. We started these kind of things when we were in grade school, break, break, broken hearts, crushes, this and this and this. And then uh, relationships, you know, all kind of devastating issues uh, and heartbreaks. And from those heartbreaks, you move and you grow to where you can look back and you say, wow. I was really lost back then, or that was really an amazing experience. And this is what I learned from that. I will never let this happen. I learned this. And so it's a growing process. You need to grow through the heartache and the pain. And the final and most important piece of advice, and there's so much we could talk about as we, as unfortunately I've illustrated, is that astainu bi sabri wa salat, jiddan muhim, that the most important thing you can do is strive to seek the help and support and assistance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through patience and prayer. And again, we'll, I don't want to open those doors and hopefully we'll have a chance to do whole series about these topics and to be ta'ala to even 
uh, you know, study some of the books of our Salaf, uh, you know, our Salaf, meaning not the Salaf of Salih, meaning like Ibn Al-Qayyim, because he wrote extensively about these things, about being patient and, 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 and so forth, and study some of these texts, which can help us and elevate us and help us to heal. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and you and grant us all success. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad.